Episode 204 of Futures Radio Show, sponsored by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. CME Group's markets help individuals and businesses around the world effectively manage risk. For access to free educational tools and resources for the active individual trader, please visit activetrader.cmegroup.com. Every day, traders and investors dive in to tackle the ever-changing markets to find opportunity. Futures Radio Show is your number one source for answers to the questions that all market participants want to ask. Veteran futures trader Anthony Crudelli sits down with the most influential leaders and top traders in the industry. Now, here's your host, Anthony Crudelli. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in for this episode with Jay Biondo. Now, before I play that interview for you, I want to give a shout out to the great sponsors of Futures Radio Show, CME Group, Trading Technologies, RJO Futures, and Top Step Trader. To learn more about these sponsors and the important things they are doing for futures traders, be sure to click on their logos on our website. Recently, I was in London attending the IDX conference, and while I was there, I had the opportunity to sit down and chat with Jay Biondo. Jay is the product manager of surveillance at Trading Technologies. He really knows his stuff when it comes to trade surveillance, compliance, and machine learning. Since this is not a topic that many people come out of school and jump right into, I asked Jay to tell us his backstory and how he got involved in this space. We talked a lot about trade surveillance with machine learning. We discussed AI, spoofing, and how TT score can help anyone from a single trader all the way up to an exchange or even a federal regulator with their machine learning technology to help identify patterns of behavior that pose the greatest regulatory risk. As usual, thank you all for listening, and please enjoy this episode. Jay, welcome to the show. Thanks, Anthony. A pleasure to be here. It's great to speak with you today. Now, we're here at IDX in London. Great atmosphere and a lot of very interesting topics for us to talk about today. But before we dive into topics, I'm curious about you and your backstory. Uh, can you tell us how you got your start in the industry? Yeah, absolutely. So I was um, coming out of law school. Um, I, I decided to, to go to law school first because my grandfather was an attorney and my great grandfather was actually a judge uh, in the state of Illinois. So the, the law always intrigued me. I uh, wasn't really sure what to do after law school. My first job was at the Illinois Securities Department, um, which is where I was really introduced to the financial services industry. Um, and what I was doing was uh, bringing actions against people that were in, um, using Ponzi schemes and pyramid schemes uh, uh, all over the Chicagoland area and investigating those and actually uh, arguing those cases in front of administrative law judges on behalf of the state of Illinois. And then that kind of grew into more regulatory side uh, things for me. I went to NYC ARCA. Uh, I was a part of the market reg group there. Uh, really introduced me to ele ele electronic trading. Uh, and then also uh, went to FINRA for a period of time. While I was there, I, I, I started looking at things to do on the business side. The proprietary trading firms uh, were really picking up at that time. It was right around 2008, 2009. Uh, and so I actually went and got uh, experience in the business side in the compliance departments at uh, Infinium Capital Management and uh, also as a Chief Compliance Officer at uh, Alston Trading uh, for a period of time too before I went to Norentic. Yeah, so what's really interesting to me is that you have a legal background and then you started working with financial markets. Did you have any interest in financial markets prior to that? No, you know, initially it was, uh, I, I thought intellectual property was going to be the area of law that I went into, and um, but then uh, the Illinois Securities Department had a job opening and I thought, well, that sounds really interesting. And I interviewed there and thought, you know, this is a great opportunity for me to see what this field is all about. Um, and it, and it, and it kind of just took it from there, and it, and it was always natural for me, and I've, I've stuck with it. So TT acquiring Norensic was huge for this space, and I know it's only been a short amount of time, but what has the response been thus far? You know, it's been great, and I think and a really positive feedback from everybody I've been speaking with. I think there's a real hunger for improved surveillance technology right now in the market. And what's great is at TT, there's this distribution network. Uh, it's a global distribution network. And, um, you know, all of a sudden, you know, instead of just being a startup in Chicago, talking to which, you know, talking pri primarily to Chicago organizations, now I'm talking to people in Hong Kong and people in Sydney, people here in London. 
Um, it's really opened a lot of doors for us, and uh, it's really been phenomenal. Talk to us a little bit about the impacts of machine learning and AI, both positive and negative. Of course, I like to hear both sides on the listed derivatives industry. Yeah, I think um, I'll start with the surveillance from the surveillance perspective because that's really where my um, expertise lies. And I think so far what you're seeing is that it's newer technology, so it's, it's taken some time um, to kind of gain traction, but now it's definitely something that people are looking at um, every day and, and it's growing, people's interest is growing in it because what it really does is it enhances detection capability and creates efficiencies. So you're really augmenting human experts and human compliance officers and making them better at their jobs. Um, and that's really been one of the, the most fascinating things to watch is people transitioning from this fear of machine learning being something that would you know, uh, potentially eliminate the need for them into something, oh wait, this is going to make me even better at my job and actually um, you know, make my, my, my daily routine more um, enjoyable in a lot of ways. Um, and then for the rest of the capital markets, I think you're seeing a machine learning application and trading a lot right now. A lot of algo development um, is, is using machine learning technology because it allows you to take in uh, data from so many different endpoints and all of a sudden you're taking things from, um, you know, how many trucks are moving products to, to you know how many cars there are in a car dealership lot uh, or how many you know things along these different data points and able to just put those right into the algo themselves and create ways for you to essentially uh, make money and be a better trader. Now you already mentioned Norensic and with the acquisition of Norensic and recently you added the, the integration of TT Score. Talk to us about how that's going. Oh, it's going great. Um, yeah, so we recently integrated. Uh, score onto the TT platform. So we were uh, acquired, uh, Norensic was acquired uh, by Trading Technologies around last October. Uh, and really our focus has been getting score integrated onto the TT platform. Um, and and it, it brings a lot of advantages. Um, you know, so people who are trading on TT screens right now, you have the ability to, you know, simply look at your compliance scores right on your trading platform. Uh, we can also bring in you know, um, other feeds and data from other trading platforms as well, but really, it's here we're going to just bring compliance software to the masses, essentially. So Jay, could you tell us a little bit more about TT Score? Could you tell us who this is for and, and who this is benefiting? Right, uh, it's so it, it can be all the way from a single trader on a TT platform all the way up to a exchange or a federal regulator um, because it's scalable. So if you're trading on a TT platform and you are interested to see whether or not you may be engaging in behavior that would potentially draw regulatory attention, that's what our score is going to tell you. So even if you're not intentionally doing something that may draw the attention of the regulator, if it's similar to things that have drawn regulatory attention in the past, you can see that you're going to get your scores and you're going to know right away that maybe you need to review what it is that you're doing because you may be getting an inquiry letter here soon. But then uh, above that, you, you can also have compliance officers using it at proprietary trading firms, um, at FCMs, uh, and then also at exchanges. Um, you know, we're talking to several different exchanges that are looking to, um, you know, go to more innovative technology with uh, machine learning um, as opposed to your traditional legacy-based surveillances because we do a better job of handling uh, big data sets, and that's what they're dealing with. And um, we want to create efficiencies with our approach, and that's what we're best at. Uh, and then also with regulatory bodies, um, again, we're talking about people that are responsible for supervising you know, the entire futures industry. And uh, that's a massive job. And uh, having better technology um, to streamline that work and make you more effective at it, is that's what our goal is to provide to people. So Jay, just to be clear, you don't have to be trading on TT to be able to look at TT score. Anyone can look at and use TT score. Yes, that's correct, Anthony. So you can take trade data from any front end that you're using any um, endpoint, be it a third party ISV or uh, you know any kind of proprietary front end. And basically we take all that data and we compile it all for you. You can view it all on TT score and it's actually going to be saved um, and you can, you can access that data at any point as well. Yeah, I mean, each year that goes by, I see more and more how technology coming from companies like TT are helping the regulators do their job. And it's great to see all of these firms and everybody doing their role uh, in, in this space. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the recent CFTC round of spoofing was the biggest monetary fine 
30 million for spoofing. So it's great to see the CFTC crack down harder on this. And I know that traders are very happy to hear that. I know that I am. Uh, so what have you seen from the regulators as far as enforcement actions? Yeah, so the CFTC and the DOGA actually have teamed up and have a, a spoofing task force now. And that's really where some of these actions are coming from, especially that large $30 million fine. Uh, and then also several uh, criminal indictments that came out earlier this year. Um, these are large, complex cases um, that take time. Um, but I think what you're seeing is there's going to be more and more of them, of them coming out here over time um, because the regulators are certainly still laser focused on spoofing and other similar forms of manipulative activity. Uh, I think what's most interesting about the recent round of cases was the different types of manipulation, uh, the different flavors or forms that spoofing is taking. Um, it doesn't necessarily stray from the idea of you know, having the intent to cancel orders before execution, um, but what is different is that you're seeing it happening in so many different products across different markets, products with different liquidity profiles, things going on not only during the regular trading hours, but after trading hours. Um, you know, and you're starting to see that uh, detecting these types of patterns and the variety that they come in is becoming increasingly difficult um, for compliance professionals um, to, to accomplish. And so again, I think that's where TT score and some of this machine learning technology um, is really going to come into play because the, model, the models can self-adapt and they can take in more um, recent regulatory inquiry data to train the model with. So the model actually gets more precise and detects more patterns um, quick, more quickly. So you're not hearing about um, cases that are four or five years old. Now you're getting information about very recent regulatory actions, which is essentially going to allow the compliance officers to see around corners and, and, and do better at their jobs in detecting the patterns that the regulators are focusing on now. That's big. I, I think that's so important for our industry. It's great to hear this. Now, uh, let's talk about crypto a little bit. <laughs> uh, you know, TT started TT Crypto. I'm using it. You know, it's a free platform just for crypto traders that offers, uh, for now, Coinbase products on it. I think this is great for retail and professional traders uh, to be able to use a platform like TT to be able to trade. So talk to us about TT Score in the crypto space. So TT Score, um, I think, you know, there is in the crypto space what you're seeing a hunger for surveillance software. Um, I think you've heard kind of generally speaking early on, they've can, a lot of people consider it to be the wild, wild west in trading. It's a newer asset class. Um, and so the regulators have taken notice of that. But even without that regulatory attention, I think you're seeing the exchanges proactively go out and looking at surveillance options um, because it's a selling point for them, honestly. Um, they want a legitimacy. Um, they want to tell their customers that, hey, you can trust us. Uh, we're monitoring our markets and they're fair and they're efficient. Um, and so you know that you're not gonna run into spoofing and other manipulative and disruptive trading practices on there because they are monitoring that. Um, and I think that and TT Score is uniquely positioned for that as well um, because we, we being able to go and tell your customers, hey, we run machine learning analytics over every second of every day of trading activity on our exchange is a very po powerful thing to be able to say to people when they ask how do you monitor your markets and saying that you're using the state of the art technology um, to make sure that things are fair and efficient, I think it's a really big selling point for them. Yeah, well Jay, thanks for the insight, but we're not yeah. done yet. I have <laughs> rapid fire questions if you're ready for those. I'm ready. All right, everyone, our rapid fire segment is sponsored by Trading Technologies. Access the global markets from virtually anywhere with TT. They are the world's fastest commercially available futures trading platform. And now you can trade cryptocurrency spot and derivative markets side by side. For more information, please visit tradingtechnologies.com. Jay, first question, who has influenced your life the most and why? Uh, I would say Vince Lombardi. Um, just the principles that he lived by, things like uh, you don't do th things right once in a while, you do them right all the time. Uh, those are great things, great principles to live by. What was one of the hardest things that you've had to overcome in the financial services industry? Uh, I think um, trying to get people to understand machine learning technology and new technology in an area where uh, legacy technology has been uh, in place for many, many years and introducing something new and innovative has been fun, but a big challenge. What's the number one resource you spend your time on? Uh, I would say I spent a lot of time scouring the CFTC and CME websites uh, and other regulators for the most recent um, 
regulatory actions. What's your favorite book about trading or the markets? Yeah, I'd say uh, Flash Boys was probably the most prolific one that I've read because I was a compliance officer when it was uh, published, so it had a lot of uh, impact on my life. Um, but I wouldn't say I loved it, but it, it definitely was um, important. What's your favorite movie or TV show about trading or the markets? Right now it's Billions. Uh, love the show. Uh, look forward to every Sunday. What's the best piece of advice that you've received about trading or the markets? So I think, yeah, I think uh, managing risk. And I think it's not only from a trading perspective where you want to make sure that you're managing your risk so that you don't um, you know, lose, lose everything too quickly, but also from a regulatory perspective, you want to mitigate regulatory risk and you want to make sure that you are um, you know, watching, watching out for uh, what's, what's happening in the regulatory world at all times. Last question for today. If you weren't involved with financial markets, you'd be doing what? I always wanted to be a sports agent. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of a cliche, I think. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I think if I wasn't in the, tr in the financial markets, I'd be trying to represent NFL players and uh, Major League Baseball players. Nice. Jay, this was great. Where can people find you on Twitter and give us a website? So you can find me on uh, LinkedIn under my name, Jay Biondo. Um, you can also find us on Twitter um, at trading underscore tech. Uh, and then also you can find us on our website at uh, tradingtechnologies.com. And on the website, uh, they can go and find more information about TT Score, correct? Absolutely. There's a tab for TT Score. We got some great things on the blog page as well. So please come take a look. All right, everybody. I highly recommend you go and check out TT's website and specifically go and check out what we discussed today about TT Score. Jay, thank you so much for coming on Futures Radio Show. Thank you very much, Anthony. Thank you for listening to Futures Radio Show. If you have any questions or comments for myself or my guests, please visit futuresradioshow.com and sign up to be a premium member for free. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes.